My microphone is good. Good morning, everybody. Sorry about that. My microphone was dead, so I just had to go get some batteries. <laughs> if you all want to stand with me and us, we will pray and get into worship. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just thank you this morning that we get the chance to come into your house and worship you. That we get to stand shoulder to shoulder with those that you have called, loved, and known. And that we get to be exactly what we are today. That we get to come to you as we are. And Lord Jesus, we honor you this morning. We give you the glory for everything that you have done and everything that you will do and everything you're doing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat>
Jesus, we just thank you, God, that no matter what we're going through, you give hope, that you give us life, that we can trust you, that we can come exactly as we are, and we can trust you to hold us, to pour out your goodness on us, that we can shelter in your wings. We don't have to fear. That we can make space for you. And even when it's hard, Lord, that we can ask you to help us. We don't have to be afraid. Because you're faithful. You're so faithful. such a good dad. You know exactly what we need. And you're ready and willing to give it.
been born again to your family your blood flows through my veins Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child
whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you Everything is about you. Everything that we have is yours. Everything that we are is yours. We lay everything at your feet. We don't want it if it's not you, Lord. Lord, soften our hearts. Have your way in our hearts that all we desire is you. Awaken, awaken our souls, awaken our spirits. Draw us closer. You're calling us deeper into you. And our answer is yes. There's no place we'd rather be.
Close your eyes for a minute if you aren't closed already. Just listen to this. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given or lavished on us in the one he loves just meditate on the fact that Jesus is God's plan A he predestined that path that ultimate act of love that we just celebrated at Easter before you were born you are a child of God as we sang earlier and he is a good and perfect father He desires to give us more and more of him. So just right now, uh, we're going to sing that tag again. I want more, I want more, more of you, God. Make that your prayer. Cry out to a loving, perfect, good father to to give you more of him, more of his love, more of his grace, more of his mercy, to be, as Romans says, conformed to the image of Jesus. Make that your desire this morning. Natasha, go ahead and sing that tag. I want more, I want more. Make this your prayer this morning.
Amen. Amen. And our kids are in here today. Uh, there's four generations in this church, maybe even five. And uh, just to hear the grown-ups in big church acknowledge that too. And um, I hope we have a, a great time resting in that and in that truth today. Um, we're going to forego the greeting because you can go downstairs afterwards as cookies and punch and hang out there uh, once we're done with the message. So if you could please be seated. And ushers, if you would uh, get ready to receive the tithe and offerings. <clears throat> Pastor Charlie, are you doing announcements or do you need me to do that? Oh, never mind. He's coming. All right. Here he comes. I, I was going to steal a bulletin from a congregant, if, if not, because I needed to do that. All right. Pastor Charlie's going to get a mic and do that as our ushers come forward. We'll pray for the offering and he can receive that. Um, just thank you for your giving. And we're going to talk about give in one of our, in the message today a little bit too, um, as one of the points. Um, but I'm going to, and you'll hear me say this again, but just, uh, th this is a very giving and generous church, and um, we, we just, we so appreciate that. Um, just Angie and I, not just money, but you guys just, cards and random gifts and things along the way, you guys just bless us and uh, bless Pastor Charlie and Heather, and I know you bless each other. There are stories in these pews that I don't even know about um, of sacrifice and giving and, and love, and uh, it's what the church is all about. It's awesome. So go ahead and come forward. Um, don't, if you're giving to BGMC, wait till after service and you'll have, the, you'll have an opportunity to give that, but uh, any other offerings or anything, uh, please prepare for. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your blessings. Thank you for who you are, as we heard and sang this morning. Uh, thank you for your love. And God, we just take this opportunity to give back what, what wasn't ours in the first place. And uh, we just thank you that we get to continue in worship and acknowledge our faith in you and trust in you. And thank you for all the needs that have been met that are represented in this room, uh, finances, health, uh, just safety, all, all the things, God. There's just so many testimonies in this room uh, of your faithfulness and your love. And uh, we pray you bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Charlie. Amen. All right. Well, I have to remember this microphone is a lot hotter than what I'm used to using because my wife was singing on it this morning. But uh, hey, a few quick announcements for you guys this morning. They're there in your bulletin. As always, be sure to grab a bulletin every Sunday because that's the fastest way to figure out what's going on at the church every week. Uh, first off, the Cleveland missions trip. We do have spots left in that. If you're still praying about going, uh, please talk to either myself or to Tasha as soon as you can about that. Uh, if you know for certain that you are going to be going, uh, we ask that you please get a deposit in as soon as possible. I know on the sheet we gave you last week, it said it was due today. Uh, we're, we're a little bit flexible on that, but uh, we are trying to get an uh, accurate head count and start making some purchases for meals and different things. So uh, if you know for sure, certain you're going to go, go ahead and get that deposit in today, and you can give that um, via the online under missions, or you can fill out an offering envelope today and just write missions trip on there so we know where it goes. All right, uh, lots of stuff coming up this week on the 19th, uh, which is this coming Friday, 6 p.m., we are going to be having a couple's game night. I've been told that for certain we are going to be playing Euchre. And so uh, I'm starting to pick Euchre back up. I played it a lot in college. Didn't get much chance over the last few years, but I'm getting back into the groove of it. So if anybody's a good, strong Euchre partner for me, we'll take down the whole lot that comes, all right? Um, and if you play, you know what I'm talking about, all right? And so you know, <laughs> what? Okay, I love my wife. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not going to be Angie's partner. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, we're, uh, maybe you and I'll I tell that story, up. Cameron. Don't worry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love you, Heather, but I want to win. So, um, <laughs> all ages oh, are welcome. Oh, have I got a story? Uh, Go yeah, ahead. we're, we're going to have <laughs> some drinks. We'll have some pizza. And if you have a favorite snack you want to bring, please bring that also. And then the very next morning at 8 a.m., uh, we have the men's breakfast this week month we're going to be meeting at Denny's over in Cambridge and it is Dutch Street. Does everybody know what I mean when I say Dutch Street? Okay. Dutch Street means that if you come you pay for yourself on this one, okay? This is going to be a, you know, fellowship time. We're going to I'm going to try to get a um, a reservation made at the restaurant ahead of time so we can have some section blocked off for <coughs> us. But um, 
just really looking forward to that, guys. Have some good food. And then lastly today, I'm sorry, second to last today, uh, right after service, we're going to have a meeting for our 50-plus ministry. It's going to be right down here to your left, my right. Uh, just kind of give you guys a heads up on everything that's going on in the next couple months. And then one of the things I'm most excited about on the other side of your bulletin, are you like trying to give me the hook over here? No, You're I'm just, nervous. I'm resting. Okay. I, got, I, got, I got lots of energy to spend, so I'm resting. Before. All right. Um, we have Matt and Liz Clark are going to be here this this coming Wednesday, super excited about that. If you haven't been to a Wednesday night service in a while, this is the one to come to, guys. They're going to be sharing all about their work with Youth Alive and how uh, we're seeing a movement of God across the public school systems in Ohio. I know that uh, it can be discouraging when we watch the news and we hear different things on on Christian news about you know how we're being shut out of the schools. But I'm telling you. When God's gospel is fought against the hardest, that's when it makes the most progress sometimes. Man. And these guys are going to be sharing some <clears throat> stories about how God is breaking through in our high schools and middle schools. So be sure to make it out here uh, Wednesday night, 630. And that's all I got for you this morning. So right. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to this guy and hope that uh, he doesn't do anything detrimental to our church in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> but uh, That'll be in minute 31. We love Pastor Scott. Can we give him a hand as he shares the word this morning? Cool. Thank you. We have a good time in the office, and well, I get to talk about one of the conversations we had in a little bit. Um, this may just be a prop. You all know me. This, uh, I may not sit in the whole time, but I'm going to try my best to sit still for, for you. So here we go, Zach. You ready? All right. Um, quick euchre story before we get into, uh, get into that. Uh, I, I, I joke, but I might have my wife or Kristen. Uh, we were at Cameron and Kristen's... Uh, I don't know, month, month or month and a half ago, and uh, Cameron and I were uh, very confident in our euchre skills and decided to be partners and didn't want to be our wives' partner in that. Uh, they proceeded to beat us four games in a row, had like nine loners. Um, we, they, they had scored like 40, 44 points to our three by the fifth one. I think they, I think they probably had more loners in the last game, but they, they saw our egos were totally bruised and, and let us win. Um, and so we did win one out of four, so um, about as good as LeBron James is in the finals. So anyway, um, <clears throat> sorry, I had to throw that in there. Got my Jordans on today. All right, now let's get into some spiritual stuff uh, instead of euchre. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, please. Matthew chapter 28. Uh, if you're using the Pew Bible or if you're new to the Bible, uh, it's on page 993 in your Bibles. And uh, we, we uh, started, Pastor Charlie started a new series last week called He is Risen Indeed, and kind of tagging off Easter, and we're talking about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, uh, and he was talking about the road to Emmaus where Jesus basically had an Old Testament Bible study that uh, explained that it was all about him, all the feasts, everything. Uh, that would have been a Bible study I would have loved to have been a part of and sit in on. Uh, that would be Sunday School 201 uh, for me. That would be awesome. Um, so this week, we're going to be talking about what, uh, what we, we in the church call the Great Commission. So Matthew chapter 28, if you're there, say amen. If you're not there yet, say oh my. Okay, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, oh yeah, and the kids are in here, so big kids help the little kids find it, as we say in kids' church. Um, and uh, you guys, uh, I'll, be, I'll be asking for your help here uh, in a little bit, so pay attention, kids, um, and adults, pay attention. So um, here we are, Matthew chapter 28. Everybody there? Okay. Um, if you would, now I'm going to get out of my chair. If you would, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Matthew chapter 28, we're going to start in verse 16, verse 16, and I'm reading from the NIV, the old NIV. <clears throat> Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. God, we are your, your children, we are your instruments, we are your vessels, and I pray that you would help us to focus in these next few minutes and just enjoy, enjoy time in your word, and, and I just pray that uh, the words that you've given me to say uh, would be an encouragement and, and uh, lift our spirits and, and help us to, to be more like you and go win the world. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. So, uh, Risen Indeed is our, um, our series. And uh, again, th- this is part of the Great Commission. Uh, this, my message has two parts. They're going to go fast. Don't worry. Um, my message has two parts. We're going to kind of do a, because I'm a math analytical guy, so I'm going to kind of break down this passage first, kind of from an analytic standpoint and explain it. And then we'll get into some application and talking about BGMC and, uh, and, and kind of its role in, this, in the Great Commission. All right, so let's look at verses 16 and 17. I want you to notice a pattern here, okay? Um, in verse 16, there's, some, there's, a, there's an act of obedience and worship, right? They went where Jesus told them to go. The disciples went where Jesus told them to go. So we have an act of obedience, okay? And then we have the act of worship, and then they worshiped him. Obedience, worship, and then lastly, we have doubt, okay? There we go. So in verses 16 and 17, the disciples, they're going through the mechanics of following Jesus. They're doing what Jesus says. They actually are worshiping him, but they, they doubt. Some, some translations say they all doubted. This translation says some. Uh, it's the 11 disciples, and, and scholars disagree on which it is, but there was still doubt, even though they were all worshiping and all obeying, right? Anybody ever kind of felt like they've been going through the motions following God, and you've got some, like, what the heck are you doing, right? Okay. You're not alone with the disciples, right? So we have some obedience. I'm going to move this out. I know I have room, and that way I want you to see it. So we've got obedience. I'm in teacher mode today, sorry. And then we have the worship. And then the doubt, right? It's on the big screen, so if you can't see that, it's on the screen. That's verses 16 and 17. Let me do this in this color and green. Anybody know geometry, algebra? Okay. Raise your hand if you know what that is. A few hands, a couple hands, right? Okay. This, mathematically, for those of you that are like, what in the world? I, took, I stopped at multiplication tables, and I got nothing left, right? Verses 16 and 17, this is what the disciples are, are processing. They've walked with Jesus. They've seen him do miracles. They've listened to his teaching. They've listened to his parables. He's explained the parables, and they're still like, what in the world is this guy talking about, right? This is where the disciples are. Worship and obedience can still happen amongst doubt and confusion right? We still keep following. Now, verse 18. Verse 18 is where everything shifts, okay? So I just have verse 18 labeled the shift, okay? Jesus now steps up to them and says, all. Everybody say all. All. Kids, let me hear you say all. all. Right, okay? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Give us your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Jesus is like, that's me now. I've died, I've risen. All authority has been given to me. Therefore, go. Okay, we're going to unpack go in, in, a, in a little bit. Okay, so we have this shift here. And I'm going to put the equal sign, right? The shift. Okay. And then in verse 19 and 20, Jesus gives them a new command to obey. Oops, getting ahead of myself. Command. I'll put the slide up in a sec. A new charge for worship. And then he closes with assurance to ease their doubt. Okay, let me put that slide up for you if you're taking notes on this. Right there, okay? So verses 19 through 20, Jesus turns the tables on these three things, right? He still wants obedience and worship. So he gives them more, a new command, go, make disciples, baptize them, teach them, right? He gives them a new charge, right? Therefore, go. I'm char- commissioning you. I'm charging you, right? And he closes with, and I am with you till the very end of the age to cover their doubt. Who knows what, what is that? It's a line. This equation is a line. So the disciples are processing this, right? 
Jesus empowers them. This is the Holy Spirit, by the way. We'll, the spoiler alert, we'll get to that. And now we understand what that is. Those are the exact same thing, right? They spent all this time watching Jesus, watching him perform miracles, listening to him, spending every waking moment with him, following him. They're obeying and worshiping him, but they're still trying to figure all these letters and and symbols out and what that really means. The Holy Spirit brings a clear picture of something that's just really basic. Make sense? That's the last four verses of Matthew. This shift here is the equal sign. I forgot my T on there. Boom. Okay? Jesus empowers them. Now, in John, at the Last Supper, there's three chapters dedicated to Jesus teaching them and promising them the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Comforter will come. It is good that I go away. Um, J.D. Greer, who's a pastor, uh, they send hundreds of missionaries out a year from their church. Uh, Literally, they raise up missionaries in their church and send them out. Um, In his book called Jesus Continued, he says, the Holy Spirit in you is better than Jesus beside you. Jesus said, it is good that I go away so that the comforter can come, right? So that shift right there, what's going to happen, that's kind of Jesus' spoiler alert, and kind of, they recognize this later. If you read the Gospel of John, he says in his writings many times, now we understood this teaching after he had ascended and we received the Holy Spirit. Now we understood what he meant by this, this, and this, right? So that equal sign, the Holy Spirit, that is, that's the, uh, that's the shift that's the Holy Spirit, okay? So this is BGMC Sunday. Um, kids, what does BGMC stand for? Boys and Girls Missionary, missionary Challenge. Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. We, we take time each service downstairs to pray for missionaries, okay, and, and do these things, right? Now, kids, I want you to be quiet. Let's see if, I wonder if you've told mom and dad some of this stuff uh, at, at home, right? Uh, parents, stuff does happen downstairs, so ask your kids what happened in kids' church and uh, see what they say. You'll probably get... Eh, it was fine, you know. But anyway, because um, that's just how I would roll. So BGMC has three action steps. Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. This is a, it's a, it's a missions wing for kids in the Assemblies of God. Uh, it, it teaches kids not just to give, but to, to grow a heart for missions and to understand that they're missionaries too, uh, where they're at. And we're going to unpack that. But what are the three action steps? Can, uh, can an adult name me one of the three action steps for BGMC. Anyone, just raise your hand or yell, yell it out. Who said pray over here? Okay, Liz, good. Uh. Brantley paid attention. Oh, man. I ah, keep it, whatever. All right. <laughs> what's, a, what's another one? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, adults only. What? What? Who said give? I heard give. Oh, Tom. All right. Here. Here. I'll, I'll give you this one. I, I only got mediums left, so you and Ro. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, that was a terrible throw. Now you know why I'm a pastor, not a baseball player, right? All right. And then, uh, so we have pray, give, and then what's the last one? Go, go right? Some. Reese yelled that super loud. I feel like he wanted that. So there you go. All right. Pray, give, go, right? These are the three action steps that we talk about. We pray for missionaries. We give so missionaries can go. And then they go and also we go. And we're going to unpack that. I'm going to deal with these in reverse order. So if you're taking notes still, we're going to start with go. Okay? We're going to start with go. Number one, go. Now, in the Greek, in the original manuscripts of the New Testament in this passage, the the verbiage and the wording is is as you go, okay? It's not just go and hop on a plane and go to Africa and, you know, learn the language and eat bugs and teach people about Jesus, right? It's as you go. It's in our going, which which echoes back to to my favorite passage, which is my my life passage in Deuteronomy 6, right, Where, where Moses says, these commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts, Impress them on your children. Teach them to your kids. Talk about them when you get up. Talk about them when you walk along the road. Talk about them when you go to bed. Post them as signs on your doorposts, right? Deuteronomy 6, this great commission is an echo of that. Okay, Jesus loved to quote Deuteronomy. 
we always bail on our, our reading plans in the, in the Pentateuch. And uh, Jesus quoted Deuteronomy in the, in the desert uh, when he was getting tempted by Satan. So if you can't stand numbers, skip to Deuteronomy and move on, right? Okay, so go. So as you go, as you journey, we're hearkening back to Deuteronomy 6, okay? Now, we are all missionaries, okay? So as you go, our lives... And our words and our attitudes, everything reflects back on God. St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Okay. I like that sentiment, and that sentiment tends to become a cop-out for some Christians so that they never have to share Jesus with their words, and they really don't live for him either, but they use that as a cop-out because they're not evangelizing and reaching people. But it's, it's, it's a true statement, okay? So Jesus, as we're going... Okay, and he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey. Okay? As they're observing our lives outside of these four walls, they need to get a sense that they are being baptized or immersed. Baptism is immersion, right? When they come into your home, they need to feel that they're immersed in something. They are baptized in Christ. It's not just about water baptism here. Okay? Our lives need to be totally immersed in Jesus. Right, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So our lives and our words, they baptize and they teach. So when we do share Jesus and, and we explain why we, why we live the way we do, why we say the things we say and don't say the things that we don't, that we you know, want to say sometimes. And if you're like me, you mess up and you say it anyway. But um, all of that teaches others just as much as us saying Jesus loves you and you need Jesus. And you know, it's not just about the street corner evangelist. Uh, yelling at people, okay? Our lives. When we go to the restaurant, how, how gracious are we to the server, even if it's terrible? How gracious are we out and about uh, at, at the store if the computer goes down or the internet goes down or whatever, and that you got, you got to pay cash only or whatever, right? Our lives and our words baptize and teach others. It's not just about getting them in the church, saying a prayer, and dunking them in the water, right? This is about living a life for God. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit inside them. I've been in the Assemblies of God for over 40 years. I was raised in the Assemblies of God. I am a fourth-generation Pentecostal. Love Jesus. Love the Holy Spirit. Believe fully in the baptism in the Holy Spirit. What has happened in, in, some, in, in some teachings that I've heard in my, in my lifetime is people park on speaking in tongues so much and they make that a qualification and a stepping stone to do anything for God, which is legalism, and it can hold people back, and people then don't do what they could do for God, okay? Um, I'm not going to lose my AG card over this. I'm, uh, trust me, we'll get there, okay? Uh, so don't panic. But every Christian, if you love Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And, and Pastor, Pastor Charlie and I, we have lots of fun theological discussions, and I've studied, he and I have studied various theological views of denominations and, and church history and things, and uh, it's just really cool. And I know how to argue for and against good and bad, uh, just whatever. But work with me on this. I'm not, I'm, I, I, I really want us to reset our hearts and minds on this and understand and encourage you, um, especially encourage you to move. Uh, so we were talking in the office this past week, and he went to Bible college. I did not. I went to the mission field at Kent State University, and um, he, one of his professors was, was talking about the difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he gave this analogy of a Ferrari and how, it, how it's, doesn't, it's just sitting there. When, when you become a Christian, you, you have this Ferrari, and you have the keys, but there's no gas in it, and uh, we, we were talking about that and processing it and and uh, as he was telling it, I could tell that it, it, there's really not a terrific, flat-out, awesome analogy for describing some of the spiritual things, but that one, it just kind of fell flat with me, um, with all the studying and, and my own life experience with this. But I am going to talk about a car, okay? So, who knows what this car is? Noah, what is it? Yeah, it's a Ford GT40. In my not-so-humble opinion, it's the greatest car ever manufactured by America. Okay. It's the greatest car ever created. So in the 60s, 
Ford was cranking out just cookie cutter garbage, lame, whatever stuff, uh, in the early 60s. And then along the way, it was a great, great decade for Ford. They came out with the Mustang, right? And uh, then they wanted to get into racing. So they bring on some various teams. What the, the, chief, the chief person they brought on was Carol Shelby, who's heard of like the Shelby GT and those kind of cars, right? That guy, okay? This Texan engineering uh, just knows how to get the most out of cars, okay? So they bring this guy on, and he brings his whole team of car builders, and they're, they're designing this engine. They're creating this engine, okay? Well, this is a race car, okay? Who's ever driven an actual race car? A couple of you, okay? It is a whole different experience than hopping in your Hyundai and running to Walmart. Race cars have to be driven at a certain RPM. The timing has to be just right. They go over 200 miles an hour. They corner on rail. I mean, it's, it's a completely different experience than our normal day-to-day living. When you become a Christian, you get a fully fueled, gassed up, ready-to-drive Ford GT. And discipleship and growing in God is your process of learning how to drive this car, which is different than your Hyundai that God just saved you from. Okay. I have a Hyundai, so I can, I'm picking on myself here, okay? So this thing, it can go 230 miles an hour. It won Le Mans three years in a row. It has all this, all this power behind it, okay? You have the Holy Spirit in you to teach, to lead, to, to grow in ministry, to, to lead a ministry, to pastor a church. And I'm so thankful for the Assemblies of God nationally. They, they've really progressed in their theology of, of full of the Spirit versus baptism of the Spirit. You can be a credentialed pastor and never speak in tongues in the assemblies of God. I'm going to rock your theology a little bit. Billy Graham never spoke in tongues. Charles Spurgeon never spoke in tongues, right? You, here in the pew, if you love Jesus and you're following Jesus, you have the power to do whatever God wants you to do already. But the baptism, this is going to be fun. The baptism in the Holy Spirit, okay? There's a difference. I'm going to play a clip from a movie called Ford vs. Ferrari. I, I, there's a couple of silent parts. Uh, just if you've seen the movie, you know why, and if you haven't, I tried to edit, okay? Uh, online, you'll get to see this too. But this is what happened was Ford, the executives in the suits at Ford, including Henry Ford II, they were setting their own limits on what this car could do. They were trying to come up with their own rules of how to use this car, of who can race the car. They were imposing their will and trying to impose their will. And so they go out to the test track, and Carol Shelby, the designer, the creator, the engineer of the car, who knows the capability of every component of that car. This is what happens. Why don't we take it for a spin? What? Yeah, go on, Mr. Ford. Hop on in. Go on. You want me to? Just see what $9 million feels like. Hey! You ready? The name on the middle of that steering wheel should tell you that I was born ready, Shelby. Hit it. That a boy. Oh, that's got a little kick. Got it. Whoa. About right now, the uninitiated have a tendency to soil themselves. <laughs> Mr. Ford. <laughs> you okay? Mr. Ford. 
All right. I had no idea. I had no idea. I wish my daddy, he were alive to see this. <laughs> to feel this. Now this is not a machine does anybody can get in and easily control. Absolutely not. The engineer and the designer got in the driver's seat. Carol Shelby wasn't phased at all by that ride because he was like, yeah, no big deal. I do this all the time. This is how we roll. God's never surprised by what the Spirit does, right? Because he's God. He moves through the Spirit. So, as a Christian... You have the keys and you're driving this car and you have power. You have power and gifts and, and supernatural ability from God to do the work of God that he calls you to do. Don't ever let anyone say you can't be a deacon or an elder or a board member because you didn't Hyundai and Shundai or you can't do this because you didn't, you didn't get overwhelmed by the Spirit at one point in your life. That's not in the Bible. All the qualifications for all these ministry gifts and all these things are simply full of the Spirit and that's every Christian. Baptism of the Spirit is an immersion. You're surrounded by it. You're overwhelmed by it. And you get out of the driver's seat, and God gets in the driver's seat. That's the difference. Okay? So, who's heard, seek the giver, not the gift? Who's heard that phrase? Anybody? Seek the giver, not the gift. I've said that phrase, and I'm standing here now to repent of that. I apologize. That is a half-truth. Would you turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you're using a pew Bible, it's page 1140. It's page 1140 in, your, in the pew Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Looking at the last verse. Told you I wouldn't use that chair much. Sorry. Zach, you all right? <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the last verse, verse 31. The last verse. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians. He's just given a whole list of all these different gifts of the Spirit that, uh, that operate in the church, corporately and individually. Okay? There, there's another list in Romans 12, and then in 1 Corinthians 14, which we'll get to in a second, he, he reiterates that. The church is a unit. The church is a body. We all have different gifts and abilities, different callings, and we all work together if we're you know, in that car. God's the GPS and leading our life, Right? We're operating in that. So verse 31, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. So it's okay to seek the gifts too. So I would say to you, seek the giver and the gifts, right? Matthew 6, 33, seek first his kingdom and, all his, and his righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. Absolutely seek the giver, right? But it's okay to say, God, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Pour over me, overwhelm me. Put me in the driver's seat and drive that GT40 and, you know, make me puke or pee or whatever, right? <laughs> Seek the gifts. And it's so important. Now go to, skip over chapter 13 and go to verse 1 of chapter 14. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. It's so important and we're so, we're so uh, permitted to do it that he puts it in there twice. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, Seek it. Pursue it. It's, it's, a, it's just an overwhelming experience. And when you experience God taking over your life, right? You want those Henry Ford II moments in your life where God just moves so overwhelmingly and supernaturally in you and through you, in your home and wherever you walk, right, that you wish... Your family could see it, that you wish your, your children, your dad, all the things, right? That the world would know that God is who he says he is. Not anyone can just hop in a car, hop in a Ford GT40 and drive it like Carol Shelby. We can learn, we can grow, we become more and more like Carol Shelby, right? More and more like Jesus, okay? Not that Carol Shelby's the Messiah. Please, internet, don't blow up on me. Um, but y you get what I'm saying here? If you're sitting in the pew today and you've given your heart to Jesus, you have no excuse to not win, teach people, and, and, and disciple people, and win people to the Lord in your neighborhood, in your community, in your work, in your school, wherever you go. 
There, there just isn't a secondary experience that is required in order for you to do that. The secondary experience, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, is a supernatural event that God even says, that, that the Bible even says that God does according to His will whenever He wants to whoever He wants, right? And the spiritual gifts, there's a, I'm not going to bother you with the total list of them, but that there's just, and I think there are more than what's listed in the Bible, uh, to, if you want my, my humble opinion on that, but that there's, there, there's these lists of things, and they're not designed for you to operate, you know, your whole life. Paul's handkerchief healed people early on in his ministry, but later when he's writing to Timothy, he says, take some wine for your stomach, right? He didn't say, here, tank one of my handkerchiefs, call 1-800, blah, 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 pay nineteen ninety five, and here's an anointed Paul handkerchief, right? The spiritual gifts move in our life freely, and when we open ourselves up to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and we flow in that, in that outpouring and immerse ourselves in God, that is when God supernaturally moves and, and raises up people in, in a, just a, a next level kind of way. Not that we're second class Christians if you're not baptized, you're not that. You are empowered and equipped and you have a fully fueled GT40 to drive. You're gonna blow the engine sometimes, you're gonna need new tires, you're gonna melt the brakes, right? In learning to drive that sucker. But you'll get better and better. Drive it, get in and move. Go is motion, right? All right, so that's go. Yes, we have two more to do, right? Number two. Oh, let me do this, and boom. Give. I only have two things to say for give. Number one, if you're a Christian, giving is not an option. First Corinthians nine, or 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says each of you must determine in your heart what to give, not whether or not to give, okay? So I know there are seasons in life, um, as there were in mine, where you can give more than other seasons of life, whatever, Right? But giving is not an option. That said, I want to echo what I said earlier in the service. This is a super giving church. That wall out in the hallway with all the missionaries that we support as a church, uh, the local, uh, national, and international missionaries and missions organizations, y'all are generous and y'all give faithfully. And there's a, last year's BGMC plaque is out there with how much we gave for BGMC to missions. Um, I just want to encourage you to continue to do what you're doing. You rock. Um, you just, I have nothing but good words to say about giving. It's not an option, but you do it very well, and uh, you're, you just, you rock. That's give. Boy, I got through that point real quick, didn't I? Uh-huh. <clears throat> good. Last one, pray. Prayer is the fuel for that engine. It's our time and our communion with God. Paul says in Thessalonians, pray continually, pray without ceasing. It's an easy passage to remember. That's only two words, right? It's better than Jesus wept. Um, so instead of preaching on prayer, I want us to actually pray. So if you close your Bibles, I'm going to give you some instruction here. And uh, I'm going to explain these things that, that you've been looking at all service. And now you're going to find out why they're up here, okay? Um, so I want you to, to I'm, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to come forward. There, these are four different stations. Okay? And if you, if you struggle to stand or whatever, come forward and sit in the first couple of pews and just stretch out your hands. I want us collectively as a church to gather at the altar and pray. Okay? Um, at this globe, we're going to pray for missionaries all over the world. Uh, pray for safety. Pray, pray that God will guard their hearts and minds. We've had two missions families come off the field in the last couple of months because of moral failures. Satan's attacking missionaries badly. Uh, there's three others that are coming off the field for health and some other issues. So pray for the missionaries, uh, safety, family, all the things, okay? So the globe represents missionaries. The Christian flag, I got to do another internet thing. I know there's different types of Christian flags for different denominations, yes, but for our church and, and Protestant Western Christianity, we're calling this the Christian flag. This is the global church, so if, if you gather over here, pray for the church all over the world, Christianary, Christians, Christianaries, Christians in, in hostile countries where you can, you know, get killed for having a page of the Bible, right? Pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. Okay. Here, the American flag, pray for our, our national leaders, Congress, Supreme Court, President, we're in election year. We've gotten more in the habit of posting memes than we have about praying for the people that are already in office. 
goes, it swings both ways. And uh, I've been really convicted of this, so that's why I'm harping on it for a second. Romans 13 commands us to pray. Ephesians commands us to pray for our leaders, those in governance over us, okay? And Paul said that with Nero as his emperor. Um, health, wisdom, salvation, all the things. Pray that God moves in all their hearts. Just pray that God moves in our leaders. Um, so national leadership. And then over here I have a map of Ohio with Guernsey County kind of highlighted. Pray for this church. Pray for your community, you know, uh, Cumberland, New Concord, Caldwell, Byesville, Cambridge, wherever you live. Pray for your community, for the schools, for the students. So this represents our, our, where we're at, okay? Represents where we're at, national leadership, the global church, and then missionaries. If you want to move from station to station, you can do that. If you feel led to just pray for one specific thing, please do that. But if you would all stand, I'm just going to play some music because I want our worship team to be able to participate in prayer. I'm just going to play some music, and um, online you're not going to hear the music because I don't want that to, uh, to get muted. Let me get that switched here. Hang on just a second. Let me do a technical thing real quick. Okay, there we go. All right. So I'm just going to play some music, and uh, we'll close in prayer up here eventually, and then we'll head down for cookies, and you can give to BGMC. There's, a, there's some really cool uh, decorated buddy barrels to check out and, uh, at this time. So everyone, just go ahead and start. Move forward. Come forward, everyone. And again, if you, if you can't stand or, or walk uh, as much for a whole time, um, you come and just sit in the front couple of pews and extend your hand to, uh, to the stage. Connor, can you go ahead and play the prayer playlist, please, up there? Yeah, find a spot, gather around. You can get up on the platform if you want to make a circle, if you just want to huddle together. Just begin to pray. Pray for these different, area, these different aspects and these different parts of leadership, our missionaries, the global church, and uh, yeah, just pray. There we go. Just begin to pray. Pray corporately, pray individually. Online, there's a picture of these four things that you can pray over. Just lift your voice and pray. Call out names if you know them, whatever. be with our missionaries all over the world. Guard their hearts and minds. Keep their families safe and healthy. Lord, open doors. Supernaturally give them opportunities to proclaim your name, to lead people to Jesus, to plant churches, to raise up pastors and missionaries and church leaders, God. Be with our missionaries all over the world. God, for your church, our brothers and sisters all over the world, be present with them right now. Holy Spirit, let them sense your presence, empower them, equip them, direct them to where you want them to go, who do you want them to talk to. Fuel them, Lord. Holy Spirit, be present in them. Immerse them in your presence. Baptize them, God. God, we lift up our national leaders. God, for Congress, senators, representatives, 
for the President and Vice President and Supreme Court, God. Move in their hearts, give them open hearts and minds to govern the way that you would want them to govern. May they fall on their knees and seek you, not power, not sound bites, not views, but may they seek you. Holy Spirit, work in their hearts and in their minds. Give them the wisdom to govern justly and rightly. Help us as citizens to lift them up in prayer. God, that we would be a light of encouragement and of hope and a model of what it is to live in your kingdom, not just in this country, but in your kingdom, God. Give us your kingdom heart and give your kingdom heart to our leaders. God, we pray in Jesus' name. Jesus, and God, I pray for this church. God, I pray for Byesville and Caldwell and New Concord and Cambridge and all the surrounding communities for Lore City and all of Noble County, Guernsey County and Muskingum County. And God, just move in the hearts of the people. Deliver people from addiction, depression, anxiety. God, be with the students and the kids. Give them hope and passion and energy. God, may they follow and pursue you, God. Open up their hearts and minds. Jesus, and God, I pray for this church, for Byesville Assembly of God. Lord, that you would continue to move in our hearts and stir us to, to win our homes, to win our schools, to win our communities, to win our families. Holy Spirit, empower us. May we learn to drive this power that you've given us May we continue to be discipled and discipling. Teach us to walk in your ways, God. Jesus. Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Jesus. their hearts and minds, God. Jesus. Another minute and we're going to close in prayer. Let's keep praying, crying out to God. Continue to pray. I'm going to read the words of Jesus here. From John 17. These are the words of Jesus for us. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And Father God, as we've lifted up our voices to pray for all these different parts of our world and people in our world, God, may our going, may our daily going and living and speaking and attitudes and everything that we do and say and are be immersed in who you are. Holy Spirit, make us more like Jesus. God, we want you to get in the driver's seat. Holy Spirit, pour over all of us. Move in our hearts and minds every single day. Lead us with who to talk to and how to talk to them, what to do for them. God, may people walk out of this room and, and heal people. May miraculous signs and wonders follow us. 
May prophecy go out from this place. May your word go out from this place. God, that your kingdom would be proclaimed and your kingdom would be built. And we just want to be vessels of that. And we surrender our lives and our hearts and our desires and our dreams for your dreams. May we realign our priorities and our lives and our finances and everything that we are according to how you want us to to live and go. As we go, may we baptize and immerse people in the things of God. May our lives teach them to obey everything you have commanded us. We pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, before you go, before you disperse, um, downstairs there's cookies and punch, there's some barrels. Uh, if, you, um, if you brought money to give, that you vote for your favorites by putting money in the barrels. Um, and uh, just do it that way. If you just want to write a check, you can do that. Make it out to the church. Put BGMC in the memo. Uh, whatever. And uh, that is it. Enjoy yourselves downstairs. Please go down and fellowship and uh, spend some time with one another. Have a great week. God bless you.